Herkes merhaba. Ben İngilizce konuşacağım çünkü Türkçem bayağı zayıf. O kadar iyi değil. Kusura bakmayın. So I'm going to be talking about Volt, but mostly I'm going to be talking about the future of urban mobility. This is uh, this is something I I care a lot about. Uh, it excites me a lot, and we if I think we're living in a very exciting time where you know the internet and mobile and all of the technologies around them are uh, enabling a huge huge shift in urban mobility. Um, this is my son. This is Karam Jan, and the reason why I put him here is because I think he will never, ever learn how to drive. I think probably by the time he turns 18, it'll probably be illegal for humans, uh, us, to be driving in cities. Um, and I'll explain why. I'll explain how Volt is being part of that uh, change little by little. Um, I moved to Istanbul four and a half years ago. My Turkish wife showed me a very beautiful Istanbul. I still think it's the most beautiful city in the world, but this is not beautiful whatsoever. Um, I think the hotel appears over here as well in this picture. Um, the insight here is that these cars are only used 4% of the time. We use our, our cars only one out of 24 hours, 23 hours, they're just sitting there. And these cars are costing their owners almost 18% of their income. And they cost Turkey 10,000 lives every year. And that's, that's a huge number. So there's a lot of inefficiency in this picture. But the biggest inefficiency in this picture, the one that gave me the idea for Vault, is the fact that 85% of the seats in this picture are empty. So imagine, when next time you're stuck in traffic, almost 8 out of 10 cars around you only have a driver, and probably you as well. So Vault is simply, uh, you know, the technical name for it is real-time peer-to-peer ride-sharing app, but simply what it does is that it connects any car owner, any person driving a car, not necessarily a professional driver, with passengers going in the same direction, and they only share the ride cost. So drivers do not make profit. No, it's not Corsan Taxi. You cannot make any income out of it. You only get back the cost of your driving. So car owners can technically drive their car for free. Passengers can get home faster, easier, with 70% cheaper than taxi rates. How does it work? How does it look like? Our driver app is a turn-by-turn -turn navigation app. A lot of people don't know about that because we've been trying to do this for two years and a half almost. And we failed in our first two years. And only in the last six months, we started growing. And now we're at 10x what we were at five months ago because of this partnership we did with Here Maps in Germany where they are powering our turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So today, if you drive a car, you can switch from the other two navigation apps that you use to Volt. And we don't promise as good as navigation, but we're like 80% there in terms of traffic accuracy, and we're only getting better with every new driver that's joining us. On the other side, the passenger app, simply you say where you're going, and you see the price. It's usually 70% cheaper than taxi. And the minute you match, you see the details of your match. You see the mutual, mutual friends. You see uh, the ratings and reviews. You see a lot of details, and then it's up to you to accept or decline. And this is the biggest thing about safety and uh, security, the biggest concern that people think about. Everybody on Vault is Facebook verified, phone number verified, TJ Kimlik numerous verified. So when people start using, use TJ Kimlik numerous there. Um, when people start using the app, they realize that it's actually the safest place in Istanbul, which is an overclaim, but I think it's true. Uh, so far, we've been focusing on supply. Ta now we're doing around 20,000 driver trips per month in Istanbul. It's sizable, it's a good number, but it's not good enough for us to start marketing on passengers. So right now, we're gr growing supply irrespective of demand. We're doing around 20 trips per month uh, right now, our drivers. Each driver is doing 20 trips per month, so they're, they're almost using it on a daily basis for their commute. Um, also, passenger is growing. It's not our focus right now, but we're trying to grow it as much as we can in parallel with our uh, supply uh, growth. This is how the app looks like at the rush hour. I hope you use it today on your way out if you're driving a car. Um, but what I want to uh, talk about in the second half of this, I don't want it to be more about Vol. I want it to be more about the category, because this category is 
quite unknown. A lot of people don't know it uh, very well, and they confuse how Volt is different from Uber or from blah blah car. I keep getting that question, so I want to uh, explain uh, this if you don't mind. Um, urban ride sharing will accelerate the shift from ownership to access. This is a shift that's happening. It's happening very fast in Berlin, in cities like Berlin and Paris, but it's catching up here as well. And I like to use this, this graph. I, uh, the source is uh, PwC. This is a uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers study that explains how the mobility uh, industry is shifting. The old mobility market at the heart of it was the B2C. So this is BMW selling you a car or Avis renting you a car. Now, with the technology and the internet and the mobile and everything that came with it, a new mobility market started shaping up, which created a new B2C market, which is, P, uh, which is car sharing, which is here BMW, they have a brand called DriveNow where they rent you the car as a service. No longer you own it, you rent it by the minute. If you want to use it, you pay uh, for uh, 15 minutes, just uh, one Turkish lira for every minute, and then you leave it wherever. This is a big service in, uh, in all of Europe. Then ride hailing came up. Uber is a great example. But at the heart of the new mobility market, something new started happening, which is the consumer to consumer interaction where platforms started emerging. Uber is tapping onto that market through Uber Pool. So it's B to C to C, and the B being a professional driver that's driving for profit. However, the biggest shift that's going to happen here is in the C2C uh, market. And for car sharing, there is Turo, there's Drivey, and there's a Turkish startup that I suggest everybody to follow called Garajeri. They're doing amazing stuff. They're allowing people to rent their car to someone else when they're not using it. So they're helping fix that problem in my first slide. But at the other side of the consumer to consumer, there's the ride sharing. So this is consumer, not for profit, not professionals, sharing a ride with somebody going in the same direction. Today, globally, the, you know, the two startups, I, I know we're trying to put ourselves next to Google, but still, the two startups that are doing the exact same go-to-market strategy, which is navigation for drivers and on-demand for passengers, are us here in Istanbul and Waze Rider, which started in Tel Aviv a year and a half ago, last year started in San Francisco, and just one month ago they announced that they're expanding in Latin America and in uh, the US. So this is the new trend. And I use this slide to explain how, you know, Volt is different from, you know, uh, Uber and the likes. So this is mobility as a service. And the traditional model that's 100 years old is taxi. You call the taxi Durak, they dispatch a, a car to you with push to talk, and you pay by cash. What Uber did is that they disrupted this industry by creating a very reliable premium service, and they digitalized it. So you tap a button instead of calling, you, an algorithm dispatches a car to you, not uh, Ali Usta in the neighborhood, and you pay by credit card. What we are doing right now, together with Waze Rider, is expanding that to increasing the supply to commuters commuter drivers that are in the millions. And instead of dispatching, we don't send you a car when you request a ride. We look for a car around you already going in the same direction with or without you. That's why they accept the payment of only the driving expenses. Um, I also use this slide um, to explain how BlaBlaCar is not a competitor. We're so sad to see them go out of Turkey. But they are an intercity alternative of us. So the analogy I use here is that if they're camel coach, we're IETT. Um, in pricing, we're 70% cheaper than taxi. So the taxi price line is over there. Uh, the category innovation, the innovation in this category has always been drilling downwards in terms of pricing. So Uber started in 2009 as Uber Cab. And they had a horrible logo. And then they fixed it. And then they ruined it. Um, then Uber Black. But they only started growing with Uber X, which is 30% cheaper than taxi. Uh, and then they got bigger with Uber Pool. Now Uber Pool is really big uh, in the cities where it operates. And it's creating other competitors like Vea in New York, which is uh, doing quite well. Um, we, together with Waze Rider and Uber Commute, which is in Chicago, are trying to be uh, as close as possible in pricing to public transportation where the bulk of the market uh, moves. 
These are our investors. We have four Turkish investors, uh, Turkish angel investors, and three VCs from uh, both Beirut and Dubai. Um, and we've raised $1.2 million so far. We're always raising money. Uh, this is what we do. Um, I just want to uh, close. My time is up, but I want to close with the founding vision of like, how is this related to the first problem. In the short-term strategy, we are trying to turn empty seats and traffic into a reliable transportation network. Are we there? Not yet. It takes a lot of work. It's very difficult, but we're getting there. And once we do, we'll be able to connect drivers with passengers in a reliable way. The midterm strategy is when you, are, when you have a lot of data, you can leverage that data to match drivers with drivers going in the same direction. And this is where you literally take cars out of traffic. In the long-term strategy, which is eight to 10 years down the road, and I, you know, I believe it's going to happen even faster, autonomous electric shared vehicles will be common. And our vision for Volt is to become that you know, button or remote control that summons an electric driverless car to your location and take you somewhere else and keep sharing your ride with other people going in the same direction. This is the team. This could not be done without this great team. We are 12 people right now. We're always hiring, so please check our website at Volt Nocta Istanbul. And I usually like to close with this line that inspired me a lot. Uh, you can't solve exponential problems with linear solutions. Every day, 700 cars are added to traffic. 80% of them have only the driver. This is an exponential problem. Roads and bridges are great. I love them but they're not the solution to this exponential problem. I think they're linear. Thank you so much.